For more on COP26, I spoke with Canada's chief science advisor, Mona Niemer. She and other scientific advisors from around the world are calling on leaders for urgent and immediate steps to tackle climate change. She was in Glasgow for COP26, but we caught up with her in Paris. Ms. Niemer, thank you for joining us. Tell us about this letter that you signed and what you want decision makers to take away from it. Well, thank you for having me on, on the show. And uh, myself and uh, over 30 of my counterparts internationally have signed a letter to urge governments, uh, uh, as well as researchers and industry, to, uh, to work together to seriously address uh, the issue of climate change, both in terms of mitigation, but also in terms of adaptation to our changing climate. And so what is it specifically that you want those decision makers, those policy makers to, to really extract from that and how should it shape their decision making? Well, the, the science is clear and uh, the earth is war warming and uh, the scientific models are showing um, and they're, they're right on, unfortunately, what are the consequences of the warming from, from flooding to extreme heats, drought, etc. And uh, the prediction is that if we continue on the same path, uh, things are going to get uh, much worse. So uh, the first thing is, you know, we want to make uh, sure that everybody understands that this is a scientific issue and that the science is clear and also that we really need to act to limit the increase in the temperature, uh, we, we can do it. Uh, we have already a lot of technologies that we can scale up that will help us uh, achieve at least some of the objectives uh, for 2030. But we still need a lot of uh, science and a lot of technologies and a lot of behavioral changes from, uh, from citizens and communities uh, to reach the objectives uh, of 2050 for, for net zero. So we absolutely need to decrease our uh, emissions. We need to find better ways of capturing carbon and better ways of generating energy that uh, does not create more uh, emissions for the planet. The scaling up of new technology that you just mentioned there, I understand that there are some Canadian, there's work in the Canadian sector going on right now in terms of research that you're trying to highlight. What can you tell us about that? Well, you know, there are, Canada is, uh, has, uh, has really, uh, you know, great te uh, techno uh, startups and, and more developed uh, um, uh, also industries in terms of, uh, you know, clean technologies, in terms of also, um, uh, the monitoring of the of the of the emissions and uh, so on, but like if we just take electricity for example, if we want to to scale up uh, the use of renewable um, you know energy and electricity, that puts a, you know great pressure on our, on the grid. That puts uh, that requires a lot of changes, and uh, we need to have a, a you know a systematic approach to. Uh, to what we want to do to make sure that we have the, the entire supply chain actually uh, is consistent with the ultimate objective and also to see what needs to be done to be able to scale up these technologies and make them really mainstream everywhere. So a big focus that you want to see from decision makers is to make sure that there's an emphasis put on that new technology and make sure that you know systems are in place so it can be scaled up so that governments can meet targets. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, technologies also are not like uh, something by themselves. Technologies are us. So I think at the same time, uh, we need to pay attention to uh, technology adoption and uh, make sure that uh, that everyone is ready to adopt the technology when the technology is ready. So there is a lot of work that also needs to be done in terms of understanding you know, incentives in terms of uh, putting in place the uh, appropriate policies and engaging in a dialogue with communities uh, to make sure that, you know, everybody's working towards the same goal. How would you assess the targets and goals set by the Canadian government at the COP26 summit? Uh, well, you know, the, 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 I, I would say that uh, the, the, the targets that are, are set are, uh, are reachable. Uh, and it's a good thing to, to, to set the goals, but I think that the challenge is to develop uh, and uh, well-articulated action plans and roadmaps with clear 
uh, milestones and, and timelines so that, you know, everyone can really work uh, again toward that objective and that they're not only sort of, uh, you know, not just like promises, but like things are not just going to happen out of inaction. So, uh, uh, and it's, a, you know, it's a complex, uh, it's a complex uh, system because uh, we focused a lot on, on energy, but there are just so many other sectors that contribute to the goals that we have set for ourselves, whether it's transport or agriculture, uh, industries, of course. And I think all these sectors need to, to sort of work towards the same goal and the uh, scientists and governments are going to need to uh, to be very rigorous in terms of monitoring the impact you know, of, of something different in one sector on the rest. Otherwise, we're just going to, to shift the problem from one place to the other. Um, you know, you previously said that public trust is critical in, in dealing with climate change. And when you talk about things like laying out milestones, timeline and roadmaps, is that something that the Canadian government is doing well enough so that Canadians can have an understanding of where, how things need to change in order to achieve targets? I think that your gover governments, uh, you know, plural, because a lot of things happen uh, at different levels of government, need to work together towards this objective. And if, if, we've, if we've learned anything from, you know, the pandemic is that uh, the expectations of citizens is that governments uh, not only work together, but uh, provide, you know, co coherent uh, uh, policies and approaches and above all transparency is very important so we're going to need to have uh, you know to, to make commitments in terms of sharing uh, data whether it's about investments whether it's about uh, emissions about our progress towards uh, towards this and everyone needs to commit to it uh, Mona Niemer thank you very much for your time today thank you